What do you think is the most anxious environment problem for you? For me, it's an extreme event like severe drought, causing a forest fire, or overwetting, killing trees in Arctic and subarctic ecosystems on the permafrost. I have been working in eastern Siberia, in Sakha Republic, Yakutia, in the Russian Federation. In eastern Siberia, the vast area is covered by large forest, so-called taiga. I am studying the taiga forest ecosystem on permafrost. What is permafrost? In this model, yellow sponges are permafrost. Scientifically, permafrost is a soil where the temperature has been below zero degrees for a period of at least two years. Simply, it's a layer of frozen soil. And this layer above the permafrost called an active layer, which melt during summer. This soil layer support living things in the ecosystem by providing water and also nutrients. Adding to the function as a water supplier, the tiger forest ecosystem is important for global carbon cycle because the trees in the forest uptake carbon dioxide and the forest soil absorbs methane. And both of these gases are well-known greenhouse gases. Currently, tiger forest ecosystem uptakes carbon dioxide every year. On the other hand, if the permafrost melt, carbon dioxide will be released through decomposition of soil organic matter. And if the soil becomes wet, then methane might be emitted. The permafrost ecosystem is easily damaged by global warming. We are measuring carbon dioxide concentration with flux tower system, photosynthetic activity with the chambers, and soil stored carbon amount by drilling into the permafrost. Conducting field observations every year is very hard work, but can lead to new findings. I thought the global warming enhanced tree growth years ago. However, in our study, we found warming does not always cause enhancement of tree growth. In eastern Siberia, where the climate is very dry, warming leads to even drier condition for the trees, which lead to reduction of tree growth. Ten years after I started my research in eastern Siberia, I had an opportunity to talk with students of Northeastern Federal University at Yakutsk. And I asked that same question that I asked you. What is the most anxious environmental problem for you? In fact, I expected the answer to be a global warming or its effect on the permafrost ecosystem. However, most student concerns were regional or something intrinsic to their daily lives. For instance, some students were worried about disturbance in the ecosystem due to strip mining and water contamination in their living area. And when I attended a town meeting in a small village, their main concern 
was drinking water quality and the waste being dumped. I realized the environmental program that concerned me were considerably different from the environmental programs reported by students and the local people. So I asked myself a question, what do we need to do? I realized if people are anxious about any disturbance in the ecosystem, then a better understanding of the system may be required. If they worry about water contamination, they need to understand how water moves under the ground to tackle waste management and the increase in awareness of the interconnection of the social system and waste disposal and the environment from a long-term perspective is necessary. So, even if I cannot solve their problem right now, I will be able to contribute, take the first step with them by conducting my research on the permafrost ecosystem with them. Essentially, to solve the problem, the following two things are required. One is the scientific data, and the other is change in the way of thinking of local people, society, and also government for long-term perspective. To change local people's way of thinking, we have to present our scientific data in the form of useful information for them. How can we do for that? What do you think? I decided to use the amount of carbon like a currency, carbon emission by human beings, and absorption of carbon dioxide by the forest ecosystem cycle in the world. We just started this new project. Co-design and co-working are key to our project. Natural scientists and social scientists from Japan, Russia, and the United States are working together. And then we will talk with local government and also local people. In other words, all stakeholders to find a better way to achieve a sustainable future. Partnering with the young generation is also a critical component of this project. I believe sharing the observation with school kids will improve their environmental literacy and co-working with graduate students in the university will inspire future leaders in the region. There are exciting and daunting challenges that require our intellectual and physical energy. Why don't you join our team? Thank you for your kind attention.